evening, everybody, and welcome back to another Mediocre Monday. I am your host, Mr. Revers. That's right, we're back again with five of the sets that people tout as some of the worst sets ever printed in Magic the Gathering. Um, so we've got, of course, Fallen Empires, Homelands, Saviors of Kamigawa, Dragon's Maze, and Born of the Gods. Now, things have changed a little bit over time, right? Saviors was touted as one of the worst sets uh, when it was first printed, However, with the, uh, you know, popularization of Commander or the EDH format, the cards in this set have gone up in price and the set has seen sort of like a boost in its value. Um, the other sets, not so much, all right? Not so much. Um, these packs here are a little bit different because they're from the older sets. They only have eight cards in them each. They were touted as some of the worst and still some of the worst sets ever printed. Dragon's Maze had very little power to it when it came out. People were very, um, like, underwhelmed, I would say. And then Born of the Gods, same idea. Um, there's a lot of talk about how the a lot of things happened sort of, like, in this time frame and, and future where they released this third set, but it was really, like, the set that was supposed to not really be the third set, and it was just kind of, like, leftover cards that they had. And a lot of people talk about that stuff. I don't know if any of it's actually true. Who knows? Born of the Gods apparently was like supposed to be like the last set in the series, but then they bumped it to the second set, and then they released uh, Journey into Nyx as the third set. Um, so, who knows how that worked out? I don't know. Um, anyway, what we're doing is, if you're unfamiliar about what we're doing, we are doing a bit of a giveaway, like we do with most of our Monday series. And this Monday series, what we're doing is we're asking you to leave a comment below and let us know which set you think we'll have the criteria that will follow and this week the people who voted last week for this week's video had to vote on the highest cost black creature now we're talking mono black creature and we're talking highest converted mana cost okay so i know a few people commented in in the comments saying you know like oh there's like this card from this set that has you know a high black value stuff but they were talking about sorceries and things like that and remember we're only looking for creatures we're only looking for creatures right now we're not looking about the highest black card it's creature specific okay so without further ado let's get right into it and take a look at these old cards which uh you know maybe some of you have never seen before and you don't know anything about um so of course we've got fallen empires is first this being the oldest set out there um and then we've got an orcish captain Choose a target orc, flip a coin, opponent calls heads or tails while coin is in the air. If the flip ends up in your favor, that orc gets plus two plus O until end of turn. Otherwise, that orc gets minus two, minus O, minus two until end of turn. So you could end up killing your orcs. Not ideal, right? Not ideal, but who doesn't like a little bit of random, you know, uh, flip some coins and see how it goes. We've got a Thrall Wizard here. Again, you can see here, this is a 1-1 one, one for, for 1, which has an ability for 1. But this is a 1-1 one, one for 3 that has an ability for 2. And it says, counters a target black spell if caster of target spell does not pay an additional 1 black or 3. Uh, play this ability as an interrupt. So it's a little, like, wizard that can counter black spells specifically. Interesting. Basal Thrall. Um, so again, okay, so we should say, like, that's our highest costed black creature from this set right now. So let me just pull that down into the screen so you guys can see it. Um, so there we go. Thrall Wizard is our highest black converted mana cost black creature so far. Then we got a Basal Thrall, which is only two black, so doesn't beat out that one. So it's at 1-2 two for two mana that says sacrifice Basal Thrall to add two black to your mana pool. Play this ability as an interrupt. Okay. Vodal, uh, uh, Vod... Vod... Vodilian Soldiers? Vodilian Soldiers. That's what I'm going to go with. Yeah. Uh, just a 1-2 two, two Merfolk for 2, with no nothing else. Goblin Churgeon. 0-2 Goblin for 1, that says pay 0, sacrifice a Goblin to regenerate a target creature. That seems pretty decent, actually. Uh, Homerid Warrior. Little 5-mana 3-3 three, three here. Um, that says Homrid Warrior may not be the target of spells or effects until end of turn and does not untap as normal during the next untap phase. If Homrid Warrior is untapped, tap it. Interesting. So you can give it Hexproof, but it sacrifices the ability for it to block or attack or untap the next turn. 
We've got a Brass Claw Orcs, which is just a 3-mana three 3-2, three that says cannot be assigned to block any creature with power greater than 1. So it can eat little dudes, but it can't uh, it can't block anything big. And then we've got a Thorn Thalad, which is a 2-2 two, two for 3, 1 in green-green. During your upkeep, put a Spore Counter on Thorn Thalad. Or you can pay 0 and remove 3 Spore Counters and make a... Oh, oh and have Thorn Thalad deal 1 damage to any target. Yeah. Interesting. Most of the Thalad things are like remove three tokens and make a Thalad token. Or like make a Sapperling token, I think it was. Sapperlings, right? Yeah, Sapperlings. Homelands is next. Another set that was like, oof, rough times. Rough times. Joven's Tools, little artifact for six mana there. If this, if we were looking for artifacts, this would be a heavy hitter right now. Six mana, right? And then you pay four and tap it and target creature cannot be blocked except by walls until end of turn. We got a wizard school, which is a land that says add a add one colorless mana to your mana pool, or you can pay one and add a blue, or pay two and add a white, or pay two and add a black. All right. We got uh, Anaba bodyguard, which is just a two three for four, but with first strike. There you go, first strike, good old times, first strike. Samite alchemist, which is a zero two for four, that says pay two and then tap it and prevent up to four damage to a creature you control. Tap that creature. That creature does not untap during its next untap phase. We got Reef Pirates. Good old Reef Pirates. When Reef Pirates damages any opponent, take the top card of his or her library and put it into his or her graveyard. So it, like, mills them when you hit them. A 2-2 two, two for 3. All right. Abbey Matron. Again, we haven't hit any black creatures yet in Homelands. Interesting. Abbey Matron is a 1-3 three for 3. That says pay a white and tap it and give a plus 0, plus 3 until end of turn. It, it doesn't say to who. I guess Abbey Matron gets it. I'm assuming that it only gives it to Abbey Matron. This might be a ratted to say target creature gets this. I don't know. Um, something for me to look up later, I guess. Uh, Asen Bureaucrats. So 1-1 one, one for 2. Tap target creature with power no greater than 2. Interesting. And then we got an enchant creature. First black card from the pack. Feast of the Unicorn. Target creature gets plus 4, plus 0 for 4 mana. So no black creatures from Homelands. So Homelands can't even win this week. Look at that. Can't even win this week. Don't worry, we're not going to talk about every card from all the packs. I was only going over like the older packs because a lot of people probably haven't seen those cards. And they're just so old that people aren't used to seeing them. So we're going to look through Saviors of Kamigawa now. And we're just going to kind of peruse through quickly. We've got a descendant, uh, descendant of Soramaro. Shinin of Life's Roar. Death Denied. Moonwing Moth, Aki Drillmaster, Freed from the Real. This card's actually worth about a dollar or so, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Into the Fray, it got reprinted in one of the Master sets. Dreamcatcher, Dosan's Oldest Chant. There's our first black creature from here, which is a Death Knell Kami, 0 1 for 2. Flying, pay two, death now, comic gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Sacrifice it at end of turn. Soul shift one. Plow through, uh, Rito. All right. Presence of the Wise, first uncommon here. Oni of Wild Places as our second uncommon. Oh, man, if we had been doing red this week, that's six. Six mana red creature right there. Kiri Ona. And, ooh, our rare is a legendary creature. Uh, Humaru Human Ascendant, which can't block, and it's a 4-4 four, four for 6. But it says when it's put into a graveyard from play, return it to play flipped. And when you return it to play flipped, it becomes a legendary enchantment. that says creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2, and have flying, and pay a red. This creature gets plus 1, plus 0 oh, until it turns. So it gives all of your creatures essentially turn into dragons if this guy dies. So that's interesting, isn't it? Sure is. But it's not a black creature, so... So far, Fallen Empires is winning with a three-cost black creature. And this is why this and this and is why I'm doing it this way. Because it means that any set could win any week, right? I didn't want to do... Like, a lot of people have mentioned in comments and stuff, wanted me, like, you know, like, let's do dollar value, all that kind of stuff. Well, let's be honest. If I do dollar value, Homelands and Fallen Empires are never going to win. Not not even once. It's not even there's not even a chance, right? 
And I think someone mentioned, why don't you do like cards, like the most number of cards that combine to be over a dollar? And I was like, even then, right? Like the, these two sets have a disadvantage because they only have eight cards, right? So even if you get a bunch of 50 cent cards out of here, they could still be less than the 15, 25 cent cards out of here, right? So, uh, Ubul Sar Gatekeepers, a four mana creature. So taking the lead is Dragon's Maze. Look at that. Nivix Cyclops. Is it Clue Stone? Good old Clue Stones. Ma um, Mutant's Prey. Steeple Rock. Rakdos Clue Stone. Battering Crassus. Maze Abomination. Kicking the gatekeepers out of the out of the lead here. Is a six mana death touch creature for for six. Selesnia Clue Stone. We got three Clue Stones out of this pack. Jelen Sphinx, Rot Farm Skeleton, Goblin Test Pilot, and our rare is a Notion Thief. Notion Thief's a pretty cool card. I actually like this card quite a bit. It's a 3 1 for 4. Um, and it says if an opponent would draw a card except the first one that they draw in each of their draw steps, instead, that player skips that draw and you draw a card. So, so it's that whole like, you draw a card? No, no, no. I draw a card. It can really shut down some decks. And we got a knight token there. Alright, Born of the Gods is next. Last but not least. Alright, Born of the Gods. Can you take it home from us? Can you take it home and have a higher costed creature than six? Nyx Born Wolf. Everescent Intellect. Epiphany Storm. Servant of Timaret. Timaret? Three mana black creature. Great Heart. Seder Wayfinder. Nyxborn Shieldmate. Fall of the Hammer. Karamatra's Favor. Oreskos Sun Guide. Forlorn Suda, uh, Sudama. Forlorn Sudama? Yeah. Four mana zombie right there. Un uncommon. Oh dear. Peregrination. Peregrination? Man, that's what I'm going to go with. Let's hope it's right. Who knows? Lightning Volley. And our rare is a hero of Lena Tower. This card's a little fun, too. It's a little one drop, one green for a 1-1, one, one, but it has heroic, and it says whenever you cast a spell that targets hero of Lena Tower, you may pay X. If you do, put X 1-1 one, one counters on it. So it gets big real fast. And then just a mountain and a junk card. We got an ad, everybody. Look at that ad. Sweet. Good stuff. Well, guess what that means? That means that Dragon Maze is the lucky winner this week. Now, something to note. We're going to talk about this now because it did come up. I do have somebody who entered the contest twice under different names. Now, maybe you're not the same person and maybe the two accounts are completely unrelated but if you're going to try to cheat the system, everybody, and vote for two sets to increase your number of chances of winning, try to use account names that are not the exact same account name with something else on the end. Okay? Just putting it out there. I'm still going to let you enter to win this time because you did vote for Dragon's Maze. But if I catch you do it again, you only get to, I'm only going to count one of your votes, and it's going to be whichever one you do first. Okay? Just... You know, just so we're there. And and I'm not going to call you out, but you know who you are. You know who you are if you're watching this video. All right? So we need to get a few people um, here. So let me just pull these cards off the table. And I will have to go through these again later. All right? To pull out. I guess I can just pull out the rares now so that I... Don't mix them in with everything else. So, Dragon's Maze was the winner. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay. So, let's see here. We're going to put the rares in that pile there, like so. We have... We should pull it on other planes, probably, right? Get everybody in on the planes. Here, let's do this one. Because this is... I don't know if I'll be able to write on that one. Alright. There. Everyone's 
on the planes now, right? Okay. We've got Eric. Q. We've got Matt. Now, Matt, I'm going to call you Matt O. You should know who you are, Matthew. I hope Matthew O. Okay, we've got Wolf. And then we have King of Minecraft. Okay, those are the four people who voted for Dragon's Maze. Let's decide who wins. We'll roll a d6. Make sense? So let's shuffle everybody together. This way I don't know who's who and where's what and all that nonsense. Don't worry, I've got all the cards still in a pile, so... You are going to win your pack of Dragon's Maze with your rare. Don't worry about that. That is what we do. The winner wins the pack of that week that won the prize. So I have all of the cards set aside over here. Don't worry. See, I'll pull them out just so that we're all on the same page. All right, it's all the Dragon Maze cards. So let's pull all those out. There they are. And let's grab the rare. That Notion Thief right there. There it is. Okay. So there's your stack of cards that you're going to win. Let's roll. One, two, three, four, five, and six are just re-rolls. Or should we do... Let's do one and six are re-rolls. We'll go two, three, four, five. Right? That sounds good. Six. Re-roll. Three. One, two, three. Right, because we said one and six were rerolls, yeah? That's what we said, just so we're all clear, right? So it wasn't King of Minecraft. It wasn't Eric. And it wasn't Matt. It was, in fact, Tony. Mr. Wolf, congratulations. You are the lucky winner of these cards right here. I will send those out to you. Wolf is one of our patrons, so I will send those out to Tony with his next grab bag. If you're curious what I'm talking about, I have a Patreon where you can get things like grab bags, booster boxes, bundles, all that good stuff. And we do do, uh, you know, a thing called the Patron Pile, which is... If you haven't seen my Wednesday series, I suggest you go check it out. It's called One of Everything, where I go and buy one of every pack from all the LGSs in and around my area. I think I've hit up about 50 stores or more so far. I don't know how many I've actually done. I should probably count how many I've done at this point and, and like, advertise to the fact that I have how many I've done, which is kind of an interesting little thing. Um... But anything we open in that series that is a dollar or more goes into the patron pile. And the patron pile is a pile of cards that every patron who stays on for more than a month at one of my magic tiers or higher, so at the $8 tier or higher, gets a pull from that pile. All right, so the first month you won't get a pull from that pile, but the second month you will, and the third month you will, and the fourth month you will. So every month you stay on after the first month, you get a pull from that pile. So you're always going to get a card in your grab bag or in the stuff I ship to you every month that's worth a dollar or more. And it's from who knows what set. It could be anything. I've done some stores that had packs all the way back to the dark. In fact, I just opened a revised pack, what, like last week, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, right, from one of the stores? And we added the stuff from there into the patron pile. So there's some spicy stuff in there. You're too late now to get into the patron pile for December because at this point when you're watching this, it's already December. So if you sign up now, you'll get a pull, you'll get a grab bag or a booster box or bundle or whatever it is you sign up for this month, but you won't get a pull from the patron pile. But you will get one in January. Just saying. Anyway, if you can't support with a monetary value, thank you for just watching. You can also like, share, and subscribe. That helps immensely as well. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you can't do that either, thanks for just being here. I hope you enjoyed. And, oh, right, we need to talk about what you need to vote on for next week, don't we? Because we didn't talk about that. It's obviously going to be the highest converted cost red creature next week. Because we're starting a trend. We're starting at white. We're going to go to green. It's red next week. It'll be green the week after. Leave your comment below if you want to enter next week to find out what it is you should, uh, or like, leave your comment below and tell me which set you think will have the highest converted red cost creature which set will have the creature with the highest converted 
red mana cost. Okay. Now we're not talking multicolor. We're talking only mono. So if we open up something weird out of like Born of the Gods or uh, Dragon's Maze uh, or Saviors of Kamigawa that's multicolored, I don't know if there's even anything in Saviors of Kamigawa that's multicolored that's going to cause us problems. But if we open up any multicolor cards that do have red in them and are higher than the others, they won't count. Okay, just so that we're all clear on we're all on the same page. We're not doing multicolor. We're only doing monocolor to start. Remember, there's 36 weeks of this series, so we will go through a bunch of different things. We'll try a bunch of different stuff. We'll see how it all works. But each week will be different what you're voting on, so make sure you keep track and follow along. Thank you, everyone, so much. And as always, may your pulls ever be better.